So just before I get into the tutorial, I'd just like to run you guys through the main effect in this animation. And yeah, just a little bit about the concept. So this type of effect is kind of in the world of meta balls. So a meta ball or meta balls are a type of surface defined by a mathematical field function. So basically they're objects which react to the proximity of other objects. So this concept was first introduced by Jim Blinn in the 1980s. And yeah, he just brought this concept into computer graphics and just made it more accessible for us to use really. So here's a quick look at some of the stuff Jim Blinn was doing in the 1980s. So we can create this look pretty easily in After Effects just using a Gaussian blur and a simple choker. So essentially we blur, so we distribute the edge outside of its boundary. So we spread the edges, then we use a simple choker which brings it in. And this creates this field around which then can interact. So this is a really good starting point, but the issue with this is that you lose a lot of accuracy in your geometry. Everything gets blurred. So if you've got a square, it's going to get blurred, it's going to get rounded. And because you're using a rasterized effect like Gaussian blur, you lose all of that vector effects that you get, like some of the strokes, like dotted lines, things like that. So there is another approach that you can take, which is using an offset path. So you offset the paths and then you bring them back in. So it's that same thing of having this field around the object, which is where the path has been offset and spread out to and then it's brought back in and these shapes again just merge together and create a much more accurate rounded connection between those two shapes so doing it this way we stay in that vector world which means we get all of the benefits of using vectors and using the stroke controlling the stroke width and stuff like that and yeah, that's what I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial using a animation that was actually originally done by Studio Dunbar. So taking one of their animations and just showing you how this works, how it animates and how this effect is used. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the tutorial and I'll see you there. So we're going to be creating an animation like this, just transitioning from this state to this state. And yeah, I guess let, let's just get into it. So we're going to start off with a blank project and we're going to make a new composition we're going to make this 960 by 960 uh, because these are all going to be vectors as well you can upscale this very easily something that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do with the other approach so we're going to start quite small and then when we render we can just increase the size so we've got our composition but this is where the actual animation is going to be housed in so we're just going to call this main comp and then we've got these three different elements and they're just rotated in various different ways we have these three different elements that we need to build so we're going to start off with our main one we're going to isolate them into individual comps just to keep things clean but you could build this in the the comp itself but it gets yeah a little bit trickier so so we're going to make a composition of 450 by 450 we're just going to make it 10 seconds long and then we're going to jump in so i've got a grid already if you want to see my grid settings you can find it here at my grid settings so 24 pixels with four subdivisions so when we create this geometry, it's important to just start from scratch. So it's going to be super clean and there's no added effects or anything like that. So we're just going to add a shape layer and we're going to go down into our content and we're going to click add. And we're just going to add a rectangle like so. No fill, nothing like that. So we're going to then click content again to make sure that the fill doesn't enter the actual path domain. We want the contents and just add a fill like that. And we're just going to make it black. So the largest size is 168 pixels like so. So we're just going to position this over here like so and we're just going to make sure that everything's locked in nice so i'm going to copy that and just paste that in there like that so now we know that that's locked in there we're going to go content we're going to add our second path um it's important to say actually if you find it a little bit confusing not being able to actually drag the object um and animating with these values 
you can right click and create a null controller for positional points and what this does is it allows you to actually control the position of the geometry uh, within the shape layer so it's a little bit more intuitive anyway so we've got our first rectangle path and we've got a second one so we just want to go down to our second value which would be 120 and then on the position settings we want to move this away two grid modules so it looks like that's minus 15 and then pull it up to grid modules so it looks like that's minus nine like so and i'm actually just going to keyframe these so we've got them nice okay so in the contents again we're going to click and add a rectangle and this one needs to be 72 pixels so i'm just going to move this along and we're just going to line this up making sure that it's two pixels or two grid modules across. And then we're just gonna clean this up, making sure that these are all integers or solid numbers. And then for our final one, again, we're just gonna make sure that those are keyframed. We're gonna click add. We're gonna add a rectangle and this one's gonna be 54 pixels like so. And then we can just move this across like that and then move this up. Okay, so we've got our initial state and we've got our keyframe set like so. So we're just going to move along one second. I'm just holding shift command and then arrow keys like so left and right. And then we're just going to inverse this scale essentially. So whatever is the largest will be the smallest. Whatever is the smallest will be the largest. That should look now, which is great. That's what we want. Okay, so we're just going to move along and reselect them and reselect them. So we've got this animation works pretty well. Um, what we need to think about now is how we actually get this kind of morphing effect. So the way we do it is we make sure we've got our content selected and then we click merge paths and this is going to merge it all into one object so that the effect can be applied to all of the shapes at once instead of individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a offset path and we're going to set this to four. No, we'll set this to 12 pixels and then the same again. So offset path and we're going to set this to minus 12 pixels to then constrict it and then we're going to select round join round join and you can see the effect happening here now so 24 works pretty well but i think we'll go with 36 so minus 36 yeah that looks good what you can also do is you can add a slider value and then call this radius and then you can just pick whip this to the slider value and then you can do the same here but for this one you want to go in here and you want to just give it a minus value so it's a negative value and then we can set this to 36 and it all works nicely so at this point you probably want to save so i'm going to quickly save okay and then finally we're just going to add a rounded corners and we're going to set this above the merge so that they're individually curved and it's not affecting anything else this also means that you can turn it into circles pretty easily as well which is just a nice thing to have, I guess. So we're going to set this to 24, 24. And then on the rounded corners, we're just going to set this to 24 as well. No, set this to 12. Yeah, we'll set this to 12 and then we'll set the radius to 36. Okay, so I guess we can just kind of repeat this across again. So that's all good. You can add some ease at this point. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't have this plugin, it's called Flow. Uh, if you don't have the plugin, you just need to select all your keyframes, right click, easy ease. You want to go in here and select everything. Make sure that you've got your speed graph enabled. You want to select this button here so you get the full view. And then you can just pull everything in like so. And it should look a bit like this, which is great. I'm just going to be using the plugin for the tutorial sake. So we get this really nice slick motion. So this is our first element. So we'll just leave it at comp one and then we're going to go and just do our second one. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to repeat the process, but you get the idea. So I'll just do that quickly. Okay, so we have all of our elements now. Uh, if you just want to screenshot these, go for it. So this is our first state for element two. This is our second state. And then for element three, this is our first state. And this is our second state. This is the composition size for element three. And then this is the composition size for element two. Okay, so if we just drop in our first one and we show our grid, we can just pull this up and we just want to check this is right. So we're using the same grid here. So it's four module. So that would be there. So we just want to make sure we got snap to grid turned on. It's a godsend. And then the same again here. We want to make sure that these are two modules up. Like, come on. There we are. And then these are aligned here like so. And then for our third element, we want to do the same thing. So we'll line it to the edge and then two modules of padding. And then they all align there, which is great. 
So the same thing here, we're going to copy and paste this, pull it down and just make sure that this is two modules of padding and that it's aligned there. And then the same thing. And then we'll just repeat this. I'll probably parent everything to this main object and then just spin it around. And that's, that's basically it. We'll check it out, see what it looks like and go from there. So that's pretty sick. So at this point, you could drop this into a second comp and you could go composition settings, 1920 by 1920. And you could just scale this up by 200. And you want to select this button here and then select everything and make sure that these also have the same thing applied. This will mean that you're not going to get any blurry on the edges because it's just scaling up those vectors. So that's now at 1920. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tile these even more. So I'm going to select that and just roughly put it there for now. I'm not quite sure where they need to be, but kind of get the idea right. Like, so it's this kind of, this kind of vibe. So yeah, we've got a pretty interesting style animation, just going from this state to this state. Very simple. Could even create a kind of poster format. So we'll quickly do this just for the sake of the tutorial, help you guys get something kind of cool. Let's uh, pull this up a little bit, maybe like that and something like that's kind of cool so let me copy this over and i'll make another composition i'll make this 1920 by 2700 so absolutely massive but it's going to be nice and high resolution i'm going to scale this up and just align this to the top then we're going to do shift alt command t and then paste that text in i'm going to actually invert this while we're here i don't know why I've, i'm in light mode i just realized i filmed this whole tutorial in light mode so make a black background and then we should be able to see this now like so and then we can just scale this up like that drop that in there make sure that this comp you have this selected so it's nice and sharp and then let's just grab this as well so i'm just going to screenshot this but i would recommend downloading whatever logo you want this is not the way to do it but I'm trying to be quick so i'm just going to drop that image of the logo in there making sure it's a decent proportion it's not too big not too small that kind of thing i'm gonna hit command t we've got our thing selected and then making a text box like that and then you can just paste in some random text like so just paste that in make sure it's big enough so and then we can just drop this down in the corner really and there you've got an animated poster which is pretty cool and you could even cut between these different states so you could go from this shift d drop in the second one like that remember to scale it by 100 because this one's quite big so yeah that's how you create this interesting poster obviously you can stretch this in many different ways you don't have to use circles you could use that uh, you don't have to use squares you could use circles you know this kind of thing so yeah hopefully this has been an interesting tutorial for you guys yeah hopefully you've enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one